All right, looks like we're live. What's up? Good morning, good evening, whenever you're watching this. All right, fellas, this is an important one that I want you to pay attention to. There's a lot of people that try to take me to task on the concept and notion that monogamy is natural or unnatural. Everybody's got a view or an opinion on it. And I'll tell you right now, for the most part, Anybody that thinks monogamy is natural or that humans are monogamous is wrong, 100% wrong. I'm going to explain why in this video. Shouldn't take me too long to dive into it. Um, you know, a lot of people go on about why do people cheat? Or I mean, most of my audience is men. Why do men cheat? Or, you know, like why do women cheat? And there's always answers in and around that because they can, because of solipsism, because of hypergamy, you know. But the bottom line is humans as a species are not monogamous. Uh, I'm going to go through some details as why that exists in a moment, but first, let me share my screen. I'll take you over to a couple of posts I put on social last night. Uh, ever wonder about monogamy? It's simple. Humans aren't monogamous. In fact, monogamy is very uncommon in the animal kingdom. If you do it, make sure it's chosen, not enforced. Let's see what the people said in the comment here. Rollo dropped a link to a book here called Promiscuity, an Evolutionary History of Sperm Competition. Check that out. Lots of good nuggets in there. This guy over here says, then why does jealousy exist? Everybody's got an ego investment in some kind of belief that they think uh, is realistic and um, serves them. The answer to that is quite simple. It's to ensure paternity, as Rollo responded. Uh, this guy had an interesting comment. You don't like general cuffs, then don't sign any legal contracts. It forces both sides to earn their attention and keep. Uh, let's see here. There's some uh, trad cons that jumped in here. Let's see if we've got some trad con response. Oh, this is my favorite. Humans aren't animals. <laughs> All right, let's just minimize this for a second. I'll, I'll come back to these tweets and comments in a moment. That brings me to one of my points. Uh, this is an excerpt from my upcoming book. I've got an entire chapter that's basically dedicated to this topic to offer some clarity to you guys. As you guys know, Welcome to Bomber Command. Hi, I'm Rich Cooper. What I do is I drop the cold hard truth bombs. And of course, the only time a bomber gets flack is when it's over its target. That's when it gets flack. Here's the truth. Our highly promiscuous ancestors have lived as non-monogamous hunter-gatherers in small nomadic tribes and preceded us for six million years. We've lived as humans for roughly 200,000 years, and we started to adopt agriculture and civilization around 10,000 years ago. The idea of monogamy and marriage has only been around for less than 2,000 years. If you take our 6 million year history, our genetic history for 6 million years, and plot it on a 24 hour clock, the amount of time in 24 hours that we've lived as monogamous or married people is probably less than three or four seconds plotted on that clock. Just to give you some perspective and frame, for those guys that like to lie to themselves. Let's go back here to these uh, tweets so I can dive down a little further. So there's always, humans aren't animals. You're lying to yourself, my friend. Humans are animals. We're no different than other primates or other animals out there. We breathe the same air, we process things differently. Our purpose on this planet is to scatter seeds. That's it. If you think it's to build roads or to explore space, that's only part of being human, but the realistic, the bottom line is, you're, you're sexual beings and you are not monogamous. Uh, let's see what else we got here from the concepts from these guys. Monogamy is an invention of civilization like agriculture and architecture. Correct. None of this is innate to humans, yet you can't have civilization without it. There's reasons why uh, polygyny as a norm, nomadic society, third world hell holes. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, monogamy never worked for me, says this guy. Uh, do not share uh, sex at dawn is a good book to read. That's, uh, I've got some books pinned in my Amazon bookstore below guys. If you haven't browsed through that on some of my recommended reading, definitely do that. So you're saying any monogamous feeling a human has, has been socially enforced created. Uh, yes, it, it, it is. It is a socially enforced narrative. Uh, it's a storyline that we've heard for the last 2000 years. You know, we've been on this planet for 6 million. For 2,000 years, we've heard the narrative about marriage. And in fact, that'll bring me back to another point. So let's uh, go back to my notes over here. I have another excerpt from uh, that chapter. Now, marriage is not marriage has nothing to do. It never had anything to do with monogamy. It never had anything to do with love. Throughout history, the whole purpose, the origin story, the Batman origin story, if you will, of marriage, believe it or not, is 
Do you guys know what it is? Put it in the comments if you think you know what it is. Let me just have a quick sip of the 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 brew here and I'll let you guys try to figure that one out. Throw it in the comments and see if you got something. I've seen a couple comments pop up. It's about the acquisition of in-laws. Nothing to do with love, nothing to do with monogamy or being sexually exclusive. There's nothing in the Bible that speaks to the fact of monogamy or encouraging monogamy. It, it's it's never existed. You know, it's it's a social construct. A lot of people come up with these social constructs. You know, it's a social construct. Gender is a social. No, there's only two genders. But the social construct of marriage is manufactured by humans. The idea of marriage was to acquire in-laws, blend, acquire in-laws, grow. It was it was really to create that that blanket of security and create influence and power. You know, you go back thousand years, people got married so they could acquire real estate, land, acquire influence, because there was no government, there was no law, there was no police force, there was, there was very little of that involvement in your household. You were the head of the household. You had authority and you had a responsibility to your family, and by building on that and having a larger family and acquiring in-laws would broaden the scope and horizon of that influence. That's why you did it had nothing to do with exclusivity or monogamy. That's just another lie that people have been told. All right, let's go back to the uh, tweet stream here and see what other comments we got. Uh, true, but because society makes women less open about this, you'll see the blame men for the reason, deep and truthful. Uh, there's a couple of back and forth here. Again, you know, this will always appear. Humans are not animals. Okay, special friend, humans are not animals. Keep telling yourself that. Here's another one that I posted on Facebook. It looks like there's a few more comments here. Let's see what these guys uh, said. As far back as I can remember that human beings are not monogamous and never will be. Trying to be so is like tr trying to hammer a square peg in a round hole. That's a good point. Um, less than 3% of mammals, I believe, are monogamous. I believe that's around the number. It's around 2 or 3%. It's a very, very low percentage of all mammals on Earth. That are that are actually behave in a monogamous fashion, and humans are not one of them. And I'll break down some very specific uh, reasons behind that. Uh, I, okay, here's one from you know one of your more tradcon guys. Uh, I'm completely and easily monogamous. Social engineering is why you feel people aren't monogamous. Trying to apply nature to narcissism. Wrong. That's a lie. <laughs> the social engineering is lying to you and telling you people are monogamous, not the other way around. Look, we all believed in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy at one point. Most people grew up from that and abandoned that belief. Um, I did a broadcast on Monday with uh, you know a couple of guys on Before the Train Wreck. Had a, a clinical psychologist that's worked with the military and Dr. Sean T. Smith. And the guy working with the military was talking about the very high suicide, sorry, the very high suicide rate that men suffer. You can go back to Monday nights before the train wreck. I think it's episode number 47. So check that out. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss those if you miss those things, because otherwise you won't get notified. And it was around 2002, 2003, he stated that uh, suicides in men exceeded that of the basic population in the States, in the military. So, the, so suicides in the military exceeded that of the population in the United States. And that's because guys were getting these Dear John letters that were blowing them out of the water, and they were surprised that the, you know, the person they committed to, sexually exclusive, you know, monogamously to, back home, uh, is sending them a letter saying they're cleaning out the bank account, uh, they're banging Chad from whatever, or Kevin from sales, and they're done. And they're putting, you know, the muzzle in her mouth, and they're pulling the trigger and, you know, taking a permanent, uh, you know, basically responding to a temporary problem with a permanent solution, which is a very bad way to go about it. And it's because your beliefs are wrong. You've been lied to. Monogamy is not natural in the human race. Let's keep going down here. Let's see what else we got. Um, yeah, there's a good point here. It's fake, not meant for it. I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, do, 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 okay, here's the guy that says, you have a source or just want people to take your opinions, absolute wisdom. I don't care if you believe me or not, buddy, but it's coming out in the book. There's lots of literature out there from guys way smarter than me that have done a lot more detailed research than I have that all echo the same results that I'm concluding here. Uh, monogamy is only good if you're raising children. Uh, listen, if you're raising kids, you want both parents in the picture. It doesn't need to be monogamous, but that's that's the ideal scenario. Uh, do do do. We aren't monkeys. It takes it takes will and the use of our higher faculties. Many can't do this. Eddie, you're wrong. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's minimize this, and I want to run down the main points 
that I wanted to deal with this conflict. First of all, hypergamy does not care. Okay, It does not care about the investments you make in somebody into a relation, the building of a household or any of these things. I cannot count. I've done hundreds and hundreds of coaching calls with men going through the divorce machine that have been cheated on. Okay, Women only Women will only be monogamous to you if they feel like you are the best that they can do. If they have options that they can exercise and they discover that you are no longer the best that they can do, they will no longer be monogamous to, monogamous to you. Men and women cheat for different reasons. Men cheat because they want sex. Women cheat because they want out. Simple as that, okay? Our sexual strategies are different. Despite what people have been telling you and trying to cram down your throat, uh, you know, for the last number of years that you've been alive, subscribing to a lot of these lies, you need to you need to see things for what they are. And the only way that you're going to get to that is if you are ready for some uncomfortable truths. I like the amount of people that bang on me, people like bang on these virtues and moral compasses that they're trying to tell you to have when they themselves have written books on banging entire countries, had abortions or had a train run on them from a bunch of guys in their promiscuous past are going to lecture you about the merits of monogamy and their high moral virtues and compass when they have none themselves. This is this is the problem, okay? This is the problem. People like to point and sputter at others when they've got four fingers. Whenever you do this, whenever you're pointing at somebody, you got four fingers back pointing back at yourself, right? So all these moral compass guys that like to go on about monogamy and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, oh, hang on, let me grab this one other tweet. There's one other one here that I wanted to show you that was towards the bottom. This guy was uh, criticizing uh, content, uh, watching the channel. Where the hell was this dude? <clears throat> hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Let's see if we can find it here real quick. Socially created. Oh, there's a lot of social narratives, right? Ah, here we go. Here we go. Mr. Sweater or Sweeter or whatever the hell his name is. Um. M. M. Sweeter, he says, ever wonder about so-called red pillars who preach tradition and then tell you to go F as many as you can and that we as humans are just animals? I used to follow this guy's YouTube channel until I realized he's urging men to follow a life of hedonism rather than God. Dude, there's nothing in the Bible that prescribes monogamy to men and women. It doesn't exist. Show me where it exists in the Bible. Okay, let's go back to these points over here that I want to break down. Right, I'm gonna go over, let's say three or four here. Now I'm gonna to try to water this down for YouTube. I can't read it you know, verbatim off the pages from my book, but let's start with male and female size differentials. Let's do three or four, we'll see what we come up with. Only non-monogamous primates universally have males that are 15 to 20% larger than females. In harem-based primates like gorillas, the size differential is even more pronounced with males being almost twice the size of females. In monogamously based primates, like gibbons, there is no size differential between males and females. Next one, let's talk about penis and testicular size. Only non-monogamous promiscuous primates universally have large testicles and highly specialized penises to facilitate sperm competition in the reproductive tract of the female. Harem-based primates, like gorillas, have tiny testes the size of kidney beans and unspecialized penises, smaller than your pinky finger, little tiny ones, even though they're giant monsters, because the alpha silverback owns reproductive rights to his harem of females through sheer physical strength and size. There is no need for the sperm to fight it out in the reproductive tract because all the fighting to, to fertilize the eggs happens well outside of that before any other males can get near the, the harem females. Let's do, uh, skip that one. We'll go female copulatory vocalization. So this one's interesting. Of the hundreds of primate species, including humans, female copulatory vocalization. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, loud moaning during play, universally exists. You guys have probably noticed by now, if you've been around for a while and you've, you know, you've at least lost your virginity that uh, women are typically louder than men during that exercise. Uh, in, universe exists in non-monogamous primates only. In monogamous-based primates like gibbons, there is no female copulatory vocalization. Okay, this is consistent. Now, remember that the next time you're having sex because millions of years of evolution are making her moan calling to other males to mate with her. That is a purpose of female copulatory vocalization. It reduces the chance of infanticide. Okay, uh, the children getting killed off. You know how you've heard about lions killing off, like once, 
once a male lion becomes head of the pride and there's any small lions, like, I don't know what they call them, baby lions or lionesses, but the baby lions that are not his get killed off. And this is, this is pretty common throughout the animal kingdom. Um, so they've evolved with female copulatory vocalization to confuse parental um, paternity uh, by making sure that she mates with multiple males while she's ovulating. Uh, also, it ensures that she's obtaining the best quality sperm to compete with her single available egg in the reproductive tract. And uh, let's do sex that doesn't lead to pr uh, pregnancy. I don't know how guys love to argue the idea of monogamy and exclusivity. I mean, mo like most of you have, have, have been with more than one person, so don't, so don't bang on about it. So in non-monogamous promiscuous primates, they have sex on average about 750 to 1,000 times for every pregnancy. I, I think in humans, it's approximately 1,000 times. There it is. It's approximately 1,000 times for every uh, pregnancy in humans. Sex for the purpose of pleasure and socializing is very unusual in the animal world, and yet it's very common in non-monogamous primates. For most animals, they have sex on average of 10 to 15 times for every pregnancy that occurs. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Most animals where sex results in a pregnancy are doing it 10 to 15 times. For humans, it's over a thousand times in many cases, and in some cases, many, many more. Humans rarely have sex for the purpose of reproduction. If you factor in all the possible ways humans have sex that can't possibly lead to pregnancy, including oral, anal, gay, just to name a few, over 99% of the sex human has will never lead to a pregnancy. Sex for non-monogamous promiscuous primates is for the purpose of social interaction, pleasure, validation, and transactions. Let's do one more. Um, cuckoldry. Cuckoldry is an interesting one. This is, this is something that I've uh, dove down a little bit more in the last couple of months. It's really interesting. <clears throat> so in medical facilities that are dealing with genetic testing to uh, diagnose illnesses in children. So the Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto, there, there's an article um, that was out in the newspaper. I think it was the last 10 years. And I think the title of it was, I did a video on it a couple weeks ago something along the lines of mommy's little secret. And they found at Sick Hits Hospital in Toronto, somewhere between 10 and 20%, usually on the higher end of, of 20% of genetic testing that they had to do to diagnose an illness in a child because they have to DNA test the parents to get to the root of the problem with the child. In close to 20% of the instances, the father was not the father of that child, proven, genetically tested. In Suspicious scenarios where guys are genetically testing their child, where they suspect paternity fraud, 52% of the cases reveal they have in fact been lied to and are not the father of the child. In 30% of a study that was done in the early 70s, which has never been replicated again, by the way, because paternity fraud, because it's fraudulent, requires deception. So this is not something that a female primary social order is going to want you to study or know about. But in 30% of the students, they discovered their father was not their father, okay? Now, if you're going to choose to take monogamy as your path in life, that's fine. Make sure it's chosen, it feels natural, and it's not enforced by your woman or society, all right? Natural monogamy can work only if it's organic and you both truly want to be sexually exclusive. But do not be surprised if your woman cheats on you. Women should not be surprised if their men cheats on them because humans are not monogamous. <laughs> oh man, how many times do I have to go over this with you guys? It's it's so exhausting to deal with a lot of these fakes and liars that like to drop their social narrative, their you know their lies, their moral compasses, their virtues, their you know their higher virtues and calibers of who they think they are. And when you start to look at who they really are, they really are not who they tell you they are. In fact, they're pathological liars when it gets down to the facts and you reveal them for what they are. Understand it, guys. A lot of you guys will be like, well, what's the re resolution? How do I deal with that? Learn it, live it, love it. Simple as that. Learn the truth about the world that you live in. Dispel the uncomfortable lies, okay, with some truths, some cold hard truth bombs, and then learn to love it. Plot out, like I said, plot out the minefield. You know where all the minds are and you navigate life around it. Don't be surprised 
if your woman decides to abandon you because of hypergamy, because she feels like she can do better than what she has right now. That's all that it boils down to. It's a survival tactic. It's a survival skill. You know, again, let me go back up to the top here in my notes. I'll just, I'll just wrap up on this point. We've been living like this non-monogamously for 6 million years. We've been humans anatomically exact as we are today for 200,000 years. We adopted agriculture and civilization 10,000 years ago. And it's only the last 2,000 years that we've tried to preach this narrative of marriage and monogamy. And if we're being honest, I think the notion of monogamy is probably a lot more of a more recent phenomenon, maybe in the last couple hundred years, because the interpretation of biblical scriptures and texts have been so skewed and twisted around that people are trying to, you know, eat up this idea of, you know, let's take vows, let's commit to each other till death do us part and richer and poorer and sickness and health and blah, blah, blah. Hypergamy doesn't care about any of that. If her life improves and she's done better and yours declines and she no longer feels like you're the best that she can do and she has options, hypergamy doesn't care. Bottom line, women and men are not are not monogamous. We're highly promiscuous. Of all the animal species out there, in fact, because the amount of times we have sex for every pregnancy, I believe we're probably the most promiscuous species. So I'll leave it at that. I know some of you guys are going to have some arguments in the comments and you want to take me to task on that. Good. Do that. Leave a comment below. Leave me a timestamp if there's something in here in a soundboat that you like that other people should hear or see for themselves because it's always useful. I know sometimes this is a 21-minute broadcast. It helps other people find it. So leave me a comment below. What do you think? Am I wrong? Am I right? Take me to task on it. Let's hear what you got to say. Um, let me just do a little bit of housekeeping real quick. Book is in set, uh, second round of edits. There's a link there in the chat if you want to get on my email list. I do not spam you. I do not send junk. You'll get a free chapter on the red flags to, to avoid to spot, learn how to spot these. And uh, I'll notify you when the book comes available, which will include the chapter on promiscuity and uh, the sexual origins of humans so you guys can get some more clarity around what I've learned because I've learned a lot. I mean, I listen, guys, I also believed in the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy and all that sort of stuff at one point, too. And at some point when your safe world theory collapses enough times, uh, you come to realize that, hey, you know, maybe some of the things I've been told and, you know, are, are led to believe are, in fact, not that truthful or don't serve me. So, Anyway, get on the list. Uh, book will be available soon, hopefully in the next few months. Uh, you'll get the free chapter. The chapter that's uh, going to be available in the book on this topic specifically is definitely in there. And it goes in depth. It's about 5,000 words. It covers all those details and answers those questions as far as you know where you get that information from. Uh, also, in pinned in the top comment, there's that Amazon link uh, for the Amazon store. I've listed every single book that I've read and that I recommend other guys read to get clarity for things like this and other stories around this in their life so they can... Uh, do better, make better choices, and not be surprised by things like somebody cheating on them and breaking their heart and, you know, taking a very, very permanent response to a temporary problem by offing themselves. I, I hate hearing about it. I hate seeing it. I want you guys to do better and navigate life a lot better with some clarity in the way that you do that. And, you know, it's, it's going to take, uh, you know, taking some flack. I get it all the time. But the bomber only gets flack when it's over the target. That's just the way that it works, gents. Hope you guys enjoyed the broadcast. Some links in the top comment there. Gra grab the list. We'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, tomorrow, by the way, Thursday, I'm doing a uh, playing to win episode with Caleb Jones, Black Dragon blog. You guys might have heard of him. You can scope him out if you want. But uh, we're going to do 90-minute broadcast kind of on his story and how he's been playing to win in his life. He's got some really interesting uh, business theories. And he also talks to men about a lot of red pill notions.